Okay, so today we're going to continue with our discussion about information theory, and we're going to talk about how to extend uh, the notion of entropy to continuous distributions. So, so far we've been working with discrete distributions, and now we're going to try to come up with a notion of entropy for continuous distributions. And the form it's going to take is probably uh, what you would expect, uh, but there is one important deviation um, that we need to discuss. So, so let's just uh, let's let's get into it. Uh, let me go over here and switch. Okay, so here we go. So extending the definition of entropy to include distributions p of x over continuous variables x. And actually, so one thing we're going to go through, it's a very short section, so we're going to go through it and discuss the various moves involved. And then I will rederive it exactly the same way, but we can go through it more slowly so we can see all the steps in a little bit more detail. So first I'll kind of read it through, uh, you know, discuss the big picture, and then we'll just go through it more slowly. Okay, so we've got a continuous distribution P of X. So like, let's say, let's say we drew one out here. So there's P of X. Now, the first step is to divide X, so the domain of this distribution into bin. So let's do that. So here we go. So this is x, this is p of x, and now we're going to divide the domain into, so you know, so this is going to be, you know, delta, 2 delta, and there, you know, are we've divided into bins of size delta, you know, all the way, you know, i delta, etc. So we've, we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to approximate our continuous distribution with a discrete distribution because we know how to compute entropy for discrete uh, distributions. Okay, so now we're going to use uh, the mean value theorem, which you'll probably remember from calculus. And the point of the mean value theorem was, was that if you integrate um, a, you know, a, a function, a continuous function, over some interval, so here we're integrating p of x dx over the interval i delta to i plus 1 delta. So we're integrating it over, you know, over in, one of these, in one of these blocks. So there is a value of xi inside that interval, so that the integral the value of the integral is equal to the value of the function at that point xi times delta. So like, let's say if we, um, let's try doing that. So let's say here, here was our, our function. This is i delta, i plus one delta. And we're interested in that integral. So the, the mean value theorem says that there is a point in there so I don't know, maybe it's like uh, this one, such that that integral, um, that integral, which is you know going over this function, which could be moving in all sorts of ways, there is some point in there, it doesn't have to be halfway, it, could, it depends on the, the form that p of x takes, such that the integral is actually equal to that point times, so the value of the function at that point, times, times the width of the interval. So that's just what this is saying. Saying that if we're going to, integrate a function over some, you know, some little interval, there is a point in that interval where the integral is equal to the function at that point times the width of the interval. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to quantize the continuous variable x. So what that means is we're going to take, people are going to give us any continuous value x and we're going to assign it to one of the discrete values. So we're going to quantize it by assigning any value x to the value xi, so that value we, we chose, whenever x falls in the ith bin. So if x is going to fall anywhere from, you know, from i delta to i plus 1 delta, it just gets mapped immediately to xi. So that's how we're turning a continuous distribution to a discrete one. And now we need to assign a probability to that, to that event, to p of xi. Um, and when, when we derive it, it's, we're getting, there's lots of p. So there's our discrete distribution, p of xi, and then our, continu our continuous distribution evaluated at xi, so it's a bit confusing. Um, but anyway, so the value we're going to do assign to our discrete distribution at xi is going to be this integral, it seems quite natural. So it's going to be, and that's going to equal p of xi times delta. Okay, so now we have a bunch of discrete points, um, you know, x1, x2, you know, however many we need, and their probabilities are going to be the probability of the continuous distribution at that point times delta. And then we just plug in our normal value, our normal expression for entropy. So notice we've got this subscript delta, but the rest of it, these are just, um, and I'll, I'll actually use this notation later, let's call these 
this is p of delta at xi. So this this thing over here. So this is just our old formula for entropy. Okay. So we plug that in. Now the interesting thing is is that it actually simplifies um, in a couple of ways. So we expand ln p of x delta, and one of the terms just is the ln p of x, and that just multiplies the sum on i of p of x delta, as you would expect. Um, and the other one is the ln delta term, so it's the contribution from this guy. Um, and that's going to be multiplied by this term. And when you evaluate this sum, well, that sum is just is going to be equivalent to evaluating this integral over the entire domain. So this will just evaluate to one, and we end up with ln of delta. And we'll see, see this more clearly. Uh, I'll go through the exact details uh, in just a second when we, when, we, um, when, I, when we go through this in detail. But either way, so you end up with this entropy of, this, this, of, the, of your quantized distribution being equal to this quantity and this additional little bit. And then finally, the very last step is just to take the limit, of course, as delta goes to zero. Now, if we take the limit of delta goes to zero of this term, well, this, is, this just becomes uh, the integral. So this is, you know, this is what you might have expected if someone told you what is, uh, you know, what's the continuous version of entropy. This is what you would have guessed. This is what I guessed the first time as well. But the only thing is, is that we actually, we've forgotten about, you know, so we've kind of dropped this term. And actually that term will diverge, will kind of go to infinity as delta goes to zero. So we have to actually ignore that term in this notion of differential entropy. But that term actually has kind of a physical meaning. Um, and he mentions this, so it says, look, we see that the discrete and continuous forms of entropy differ by quantity ln of delta, uh, which diverges, so it kind of goes to infinity. And this is just reflecting the fact that if you want to specify a continuous distribution very, very precisely, so if you want to tell exactly, like, what is the value of, like, p at exactly this, this point, it requires lot, lots of bits, and the more bits you need, the smaller delta gets. So it's in a sense, it's kind of natural, um, but uh, we, we drop it from the, from the definition of the differential entropy. And actually, we'll see below that um, for some of our entropy, um, for some of our entropy terms, our, our continuous entropy terms, we'll be talking about differences of entropy. So in some of those cases, actually, these long deltas will just kind of cancel out anyway. You can kind of think of them as canceling out. Um, but nevertheless, they're kind of there. So just it's good to know that the differential entropy is essentially what you would think the continuous extension of the discrete entropy, but that there is this kind of ln delta term that's kind of in the background reflecting the fact that um, you, know, we, you, know, you need an infinite amount of information to specify a continuous, um, you know, continuous uh, distribution, basically, a continuous variable for perfectly precise. Okay, so yeah, and then the last bit is that you, know, you can just extend it to multiple variables. So, that's, uh, so that, that's all we wanted to talk about, but I thought it would be useful to actually go through this um, computation a little bit more slowly. It's, it's a simple one. So, so let's just do it again. Um, we'll do it on a fresh piece of paper, and so you can see kind of all the steps and go a little bit more slowly. So let's, let's just uh, add a piece of paper. I think I actually already have. Uh, so here we go. Okay. So... Okay, so the first thing we have is we have a probability distribution. So here is x, here is p of x, and we're interested in, you know, what is, you know, h of p equals what? Okay, so let's just, you know, let's say it kind of looks like this, whatever. Okay, so step one, so we already have, we know how to work out entropy for discrete distributions. So let's turn this into a discrete distribution. So how are we going to do that? The natural way is to just um, discretize the discretize the domain. So we're going to split up this the x the x axis into bins. So here is let's just say this is zero. This is delta. This is two delta dot dot dot. This is you know i delta. This is you know i plus one delta, and so on. Okay. So We've kind of we've kind of binned up our distribution into into little bins, and now okay. So now the question is, um, how are we going to? So clearly, we're going to now need to assign um, probabilities to the to the various bins. So how are we going to do that? So first, sorry, let me just mention. So quantize the domain. Okay. So now step two, assign probabilities. I guess. 
So, and to kind of keep things um, to keep things clear, I'm going to use p delta as our probability distribution for the discrete distribution to to avoid confusing with p of x, which is the continuous one. So we want to know what p delta is. So for that, what we do is we use the mean value theorem, right? And we say, look, I sort of have to account for these probability masses in, inside each of these bins. So let's just look at one of those bins. The total probability mass inside that interval, we know that that's actually, that's by the mean value theorem, it actually equals P of xi delta uh, for some xi in, you guys can see this, uh, for some xi in that interval. So this is going to be i delta, i plus one delta. Okay, and this is just by the mean value theorem. Okay, so what we're going to do, so we're going to assign we're going to assign that to p of delta xi. So what we're going to do is um, any x that we get, we find the bin that it belongs to, and we assign it to xi. So, uh, you know, x goes to, let's actually, let's be, any x, any x belonging to i delta i plus one delta, will be mapped to goes to xi. And what is the probability of observing xi? We just saw that you know, PD of xi is, well, the, it's the probability that x falls in this interval, which is p of xi, sorry, p, p of x dx. And we've just saw, we've just seen that that is p of xi delta. Okay, so we now have, we now kind of quantize our distribution. We can take any 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 continuous um, any continuous value that comes in. We find the bin it belongs to and assign it to the xi that we found from the mean value theorem. And we know and we know what probability to assign um, to that bin just again from the mean value theorem. Okay, so now step three. So you can, we're going to, we're going to now compute uh, entropy as before. So here is, we're just called H of delta. Actually, no, we shouldn't call H of delta. It's just H of P of delta. So this was just the entropy of our discrete distribution. And we know how to do this. So this is just going to be the sum on i, p delta x i, uh, you know, log, um, sorry, we've been using ln, so let's just use ln, ln p of delta x i. And we know that this is, so we just plug in our values from above. So this is p of x i delta times ln p of x i delta okay so that's just that's just our old formula for for entropy i'm oh, sorry there's gotta be minus signs so let's put in the minus sign okay terrific oh i need i need to add another page so let's do that uh okay great okay good so now we so that that was just our our entropy uh for discrete so now let's let's now let's have a look at this this quantity so we've got Let's split up the ln first. So we say, so h of p delta is going to equal to minus the sum on i of p of x i delta ln p of x i. Okay. And then we'll just do the other one as well. Ln delta. So all we've done is we've just expanded this out. Okay, so now just to see how this simplifies, um, notice that we can just, this sum is over i, and i only shows up in p of xi. So we can actually just evaluate this term outside uh, independently. So we can evaluate this term you know, on its own. And we know 
And so what is this? So this is sum on i. We know from our definition, so this is i delta to i plus 1 delta p of x dx, right? And so then this is just going to equal to, you know, minus infinity, infinity, p of x dx, which is equal to 1. So this whole thing just be becomes 1. So we can write this as just minus ln delta. And, but, and, th and this term up here just stays as it is. But it might be a little bit more helpful if we just actually, I will just move. It might be a little bit more, um, might give you more of a hint if I just move this delta out here. So I'll just write that. Haven't changed anything, but I've just moved the delta out there. Okay, so the final, so the final step, whatever, uh, you know, step four is to take the limit as delta goes to zero. So we say, okay, so limit delta goes to zero of h p delta is equal to limit delta goes to zero of, what do we have? Well, minus sum on i p of, let me, let me write this a little more nicely, p of x i times ln p of x i delta uh, minus ln delta. And, and the limit is, we're doing, taking the limiting operation on both of these things. So now the first, and so this will just become, look, look at what this is. This is just a bunch of points that are getting closer and closer together. And, and delta is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is kind of, so this is going to kind of d of x, and this is going to an integral basically. So what we get is, is equal to minus p of x, ln p of x, dx, but then we have this, this thing, minus ln, which is, you know, m minus ln zero, which is kind of going to, we actually don't want to eliminate it, uh, but it's, you know, going to infinity. So we just drop that part and we call this the differential entropy. So that's all there is to it. So it's just a kind of a, a, a nice use of the mean value theorem to quantize a continuous distribution. And then we just take the limit um, and uh, we just drop the term, the diverging term, which is kind of reflecting the fact that, uh, you know, if you actually want to specify a continuous distribution infinitely precisely, you need an infinite amount of information. Um, and that's basically all there is to it. So you might have, so this differential entropy is kind of, you know, to just to compare it, of course, to our normal entropy, it looks very much like it, right? It's just, you know, this, we had a very similar, so that was our old definition for discrete, for discrete distributions. This is the one for the continuous ones, pretty much what you would expect um, with uh, this small but important, uh, important difference. So hopefully that was helpful um, and now allows you to think about um, kind of entropy in maybe a more unified way in both the continuous and the discrete uh, in the discrete case. So that's all I wanted to say for this section. And uh, yeah, see you next time as we continue with uh, information theory. Thanks.